This is not how I imagined my first day. Capcom has done quite a lot of interviews lately and in this video we're going to be talking about another one. Now I did cover this in my last video but it is a very expansive article and I wanted to cover the actual camera changes in the previous video and then cover these ones separately as they're a little bit disconnected from the previous point. So let's get into this anyway. Now you may be wondering what is exactly detailed in this and there's quite a number of things. They not only talk about Resident Evil 2 in a variety of different ways, they also do talk about Monster Hunter, they talk about Street Fighter, they talk about Devil May Cry and even some other games in their catalogue as well. Now today we're going to be analysing their actual thoughts about Resident Evil 2's remake as an IP overall and how the company is actually handling it. It. So without any further delay, let's get right into it. Now the interviewee says, Resident Evil 7 was a far superior product that took the series back to its horror roots. However, commercially it is lagging behind its predecessors, Resident Evil 7 so far only sold 5.1 million units, while Resident Evil 6 did manage to sell 7.1 million. Fans and critics may see Resident Evil 7 as a comeback, but what about Capcom? Now the response is very interesting, and it goes like this. While we have shareholders to appear, it's not just about commercial performance. There is an artistic element that always comes in where we know this is the right way. And while if we compare RE7 to RE6, the absolute numbers are not the same. In terms of the profitability, it's completely fine. It ticked all of our boxes internally and it was really well received. And in some respects, getting some very good review scores counts as much for Capcom as a game that sells millions and millions and millions. We'd prefer a game that got a 9 and sold less than got a 6 but sold more. And that's a very, very impactful comment to make, preferring a game that gets higher claim but sells less than getting one that reviews low but sells a number of copies, especially for a corporation. I would say that honestly that's a little bit of fluffery from the advertisement perspective to try to make Capcom look a little bit better and of course any department and anyone in his position would definitely do the same. But I very much they're like, hey Hirabashi, how you doing man? And he's like, I'm doing good, just make sure our game sells less but gets reviewed more. Like come on, everybody wants sales and if I do remember particularly with Resident Evil 7 with them saying that they were all happy about the number of sales, I actually remember them projecting they'd get a lot more than they actually did, and they weren't exactly particularly happy about that, but you know. Now the interview does carry on about this specific point, so let's continue with this. We are less focused on day one sales these days too. We are looking much more at the long term, and in that case Resident Evil 7 is performing amazingly. Even now, after two years, it's still the VR flagship title, and that keeps the game selling well. Of course he is correct about this specific thing, day one sales aren't exactly the most important anymore and neither are the first week. Of course these will be the time that the game sells the most, but due to DLC and other components, the ability for a game to make money far beyond its initial sales is widely available on the market at this time. So of course focusing less on the day one sales is a very important thing for every single developer. And with Resident Evil 7 having the VR capability, that definitely did help bolster it up and keep sales coming, as on the PlayStation 4 there is definitely a lack of good, successful, fully developed VR titles. The interview continues with an explanation on why Resident Evil 2 will be released in January. We even have internal meetings where we have a game that is penciled in for a certain window and we then stop, think and just go, let's put it in that January slot. People seem to have caught and onto it now, whereas everything used to come just before Christmas, you are starting to see a lot more quality titles coming during the first quarter. We know our titles and our audience, and we know the appeal we have, and we also know what our competitors try to do. We're not going to stand up to those companies dropping tens of millions on marketing, we are in some respects a boutique publisher, and that January window fits with us. There are rewards that can come in launching before Christmas, 
but also that comes with inherent risks, and culturally, you could say as a Japanese publisher, we like to avoid risk rather than gamble on having a massive success. That's not to say at some point we won't go, hey, next Monster Hunter, let's make it a Christmas title. But at the moment, January represents low risk and high returns, and now we're starting to see other publishers in there as well. So basically, if you do launch a title before Christmas, you'll get a lot of people purchasing it due to the fact they have money available to them and they're feeling very positive, as well as you'll get a very large number of people buying it as a gift for friends, family, romantic partners, etc. However, due to the large number of AAA titles that do launch there, Capcom doesn't seem to have faith that they could actually compete with the number of very large AAA titles that are produced at that time and then released, and so they're opting for a January release. And again, if you do look at Resident Evil 2's release date being January the 23rd, you can see they're actually opting for the end of January. And this to me is because most people will be bored with the games they have played, probably got the playtime they want out of them, and are definitely looking for something new to play at that time. Now the rest of the article is talking about other games, and this was going to be discussing the reception of Capcom about Resident Evil 2, and it looks like we've had some very intriguing thoughts here and there, some that are just fluffery, but also some very accurate ones as well. I hope you did enjoy the video, of course, maybe learned a thing or two that you didn't know before. If you want to check the full article out, I will leave a link to that in the description. If you do want to support me, please do leave a like, a share, or a subscribe, it would really help me grow, and you could definitely welcome yourself to the Avid Alliance. But for now guys, I just hope you're having a beautiful day. As always, take it easy and peace.